Hi everyone, uh, today I am here with my gripes about the Atmos Ninja 5. And I do not know why everybody loves this product so much. <clears throat> um, I'm aware that uh, I think Atmos, they already came out with a newer product. I know they have the Atmos Ninja 5 Plus and whatever the newest one is, but I know that a lot of people still use the Ninja 5 right here. And the biggest problem I have is the build quality. And I forgot, I saw another YouTube video um, by a famous YouTuber kind of complaining about the same thing. And that's the only video that I've seen that's addressing this topic, which I assume is happening to a lot of other people too. <clears throat> so here's the problem. When I first opened it, I thought it kind of feels a little flimsy. So first I thought, okay, maybe they're trying to save weight, which is understandable. So here's the problem. You can attach Sony NPF batteries to the back, but if you want to use it for an extended period of time, uh, you need to get the combination of this and this so that instead of putting a battery here, you put this dummy which slides in clicks and then you plug this into here, plug this into the wall and you can use the Atmos Ninja 5 without worrying about your battery going dead. The problem that I had is on during camera checkout, what happened was my AC apparently was trying to slide this off and if you put it at even a slight angle, pressure gets applied to these pins right here. I don't know if you can see it. Causing it to get stuck in the holes here. And so I ended up with an Atmos Ninja with one of the conductors broken off and stuck in here which pretty much made it unusable, period. Um, I was able to fix it by doing a lot of things that are not recommended. It's, I think it says you're not supposed to open it because there's no user serviceable parts. Um, it was a matter of using pliers and kind of scare, terrifyingly pulling at bits and pieces of broken off conductor. Uh, luckily I was able to fix it, but just the fact that that happened makes me not want to attach or remove this gear, period, in fear of the same thing happening again. But when I do, I make sure that I hold it down flush so that there's no angle whatsoever that might cause any stress and gently take it off. And what exacerbates the problem is that if you need SDI in and out, then there's this other module that goes on the same slot. So of course this is like a heavier, like a bigger piece of equipment that you need to slide on in the same way which gives me the same fears. Oh, and now I hate it when it doesn't click right. Okay. And then on top of that, now you put this here. So I feel like I'm taking an already kind of fragile product and putting these two pieces on, which exacerbates the problem. And not only that, but um, as I'm reading this, the Atmos Ninja 5, 
is $399. The expansion module, SDI expansion module, which is oh no longer available. I see it used for like roughly $300. Is that is that right? I don't think I paid that much for it. Oh, 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 but I see Adorama has the kit that has it all with 530. Okay. So based on Adorama's current price, this setup right here costs $539 plus tax. And I think that's kind of expensive for a piece of equipment of this build quality. And I don't understand why other competitors don't exist. Well, they do exist, but they're kind of outdated. Um, at my workplace, we have a Conversion Design Odyssey Q7 Plus. And that thing, I don't know, it's like 10 years old? Uh, maybe not 10 years old. I do understand it costs a lot more. I think it was something around $1,000 at the time. But it already has SDI in, out, through, HDMI in, out, I'll bite the HDMI. I think it was a mini HDMI and it has never failed me. And uh, if I remember correctly, it even does 4K and I still use it to this day. But for some reason, uh, I think Convergent Design has gone out of business because their website doesn't even exist anymore. Um, what else do we have? I see that, oh yeah, back in the days, a lot of people used the sound devices PIX240, which I think is outrageous because I see that on Adorama, a used one is $3,000. Yes, I understand that it has time code, Jamsync, it's got XLR in, out, it's got uh, SDI and all that, but $3,000, and $3,000, if I remember correctly, the monitor is like tiny, and it was uh, pretty dim that you'd have a hard time seeing what's going on in daylight. But anyway, that's a product from more than a decade ago, so is what it is. I see that Blackmagic Design Video Assist 5 inch 12G SDI HDMI HDR recording monitor. A mouthful. Um, that is a current product for $795. So I've never used this product in person. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So it's an all in one HDR monitor. Uh, okay, nice. It's got 12G SDI, HDMI 2.0. This is a product that I might consider, but the Atmos Ninja 5 is just so kind of hard because it gets the job done. I already have it. As long as I'm very careful about it, it does what I need it to do, so I don't have any reason to purchase the Blackmagic design. I also hear that it's a lot heavier. I don't know, is that the price I have to pay to save weight? You know, get a flimsier product to save weight. Okay, that makes sense, but still, I don't understand why there are no competitors to the Atmos Ninja 5 that can do the same kind of thing at a similar price point. Just as an example, okay, this is not a similar price point, but, and it's a product for a different market, but the beautiful DJI transmission, this is just the receiver and the monitor, but, <clears throat> The thing is, with this product, which is not made to compete with the Atmos Ninja 5, it's a long range uh, wireless video transmitter and receiver combination. But what I don't understand is that it's got ports here. It's got an HDMI port, 
So you can use this as a standalone monitor. On top of that, you've got a micro SDI port, a uh, micro SDI card slot here, so you can record proxies of what you're receiving. Um, kind of unrelated, but you also have uh, SDI and HDMI out ports here, so you can daisy chain other monitors. Why couldn't they just let this thing record from the input and not just record proxies, but full res, full frame rate, videos in whatever, H.264 ideally ProRes. Considering all of the technology they have, I don't think that would be such a difficult thing to do. Maybe it's politics or... I don't know why. Does Atmos have some kind of intellectual property right to be the only ones to offer this specific set of functions? It just makes me wonder.